This is KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and if you're listening on the radio, we sound a little bit hollower than usual. Of course, if you're watching the video, you know immediately that there's something going on. We're actually on location today at the African American Museum of Iowa with the curator of the museum, Brianna Wright. Brianna, thanks for being on the Culture Crawl. Yeah, thanks for having me, and thanks for coming out. Well, thanks for letting us come here into the exhibit. You can see that we are in the Creationarium, which is a part of the new exhibit here at the African American Museum called Products of a Creative Mind. We'll talk about the Creationarium in a little bit, but for those who haven't uh, maybe seen any of the media coverage or read about this uh, new exhibit, uh, tell me about it. Sure, so it's about African American inventors and innovators. Um, so we've got it split up into four different sections. So we focus primarily on agriculture and food science at the beginning. Obviously, we wanted to highlight George Washington Carver, and so he was a great fit there. And then we've got a section on transportation, one on um, kind of just everyday life. So people who innovated things or processes that helped um, kind of impact the way we just live every day. And then the final big section is on medicine, so people who innovated um, medical um, treatments or medical procedures or also um, medicines and things like that. Kind of. There are, you know, there are so many amazing stories. Of course, it starts with George Washington Carver. Right. And who I think, I don't, you know, we, we, we studied him in school, and I don't think we studied him just because he had an Iowa connection, right. uh, because he studied at the, uh, at Iowa State University, mm -hmm. uh, and I think was, was he the, and he was the first black professor. He was, yeah. yeah. He got his, um, he actually started at Simpson College. Right. And then transferred to Iowa State after about a year at Simpson. Um, he'd been studying art at Simpson, actually, and transferred to Iowa State to study um, botany and um, kind of more in the agricultural side of things. And he got his degree from there, both his bachelor's and his master's, and then was hired as a staff member and became the first black um, professor there. And then was recruited by Tuskegee University in Alabama, um, and he'd been intending, um, my understanding is he intended to stay in Iowa, didn't really have a plan to leave until he was called up by Booker T. Washington to come down to Tuskegee, so. But we still claim him. Sure, we, of course we do, yeah. So, <laughs> as I said, that's that's a very familiar story, mm -hmm. so tell me one that's not quite so familiar. Oh, we've got a lot in here. So one of my favorite stories is about Madam C.J. Walker. Um, she is one of the, considered one of the first self-made female millionaires in the country, um, not just African American, but um, female millionaires in general. Um, she was actually born 1867, so just a couple years after slavery ended. Um, she was the first of her siblings to be born free, and was born very poor in the South. Her parents were sharecroppers, worked on a farm. They had been slaves, and she kind of, um, you know, made her way up, and she eventually, um, she moved to St. Louis, and then she lived in Denver for a while. Um, her company was later headquartered in Indianapolis. Um, she spent a lot of the end of her life in New York City, um, and just was a really interesting person. And so um, she invented a line of hair care products and beauty products, and was um, also very interested in helping other um, black women, especially, learn how to be self-sufficient. And so she had hundreds of, they were called Walker agents, um, women who were trained to sell and teach others to use her beauty products. So I just love that, you know, through the thing, the products that she created, she also helped a lot of other people um, kind of be self-sufficient, a lot of other women kind of start their careers. Talking with Brianna, Brianna Wright, the curator of the African American Museum of Iowa, about uh, products of a creative mind, the current exhibit, which talks about the, uh, all of the, well, not all, but uh, a ton of the uh, advances made by uh, African Americans over the years. You have a whole section on the medical industry. We do. Yeah, so we've got a few people featured in there, and then um, it's certainly not everyone, but we tried to kind of pick some of the more um, significant innovations and things that have impacted the most number of people. Um, so one of the people we featured is Charles Drew, who was a big innovator in blood banking. He was an expert in blood transfusions and the um, makeup of blood and how to store and preserve it. And he was the director of the Blood for Britain program, which was before the United States entered World War II, it was a program where they um, essentially did blood drives and gathered blood to send to Britain for injured soldiers and civilians. And he was just really instrumental in um, kind of setting a lot of the policies and procedures that are still in place for you know, soliciting um, blood donors and working with them and collecting the blood and storing it and transferring it. He also became the first director of the Red Cross blood banking and blood donation program in the U.S. did enter World War II. 
Um, we also have, um, I like um, Percy Julian a lot too. He's actually not a doctor, he's a chemist. He's in our medical section. Um, he did a lot of work with soybeans and developed a lot of products. Um, he actually worked at the Glidden Company, which is, I always think of being more as a paint company. Um, you don't really associate it with medical things, but he worked in their soy division and worked um, developing new uses for soy by byproducts that were created during the processes of some of the other things they were making. And a lot of people compare his work to the soybean with that of George Washington Carver to the peanut. And he's in medicine because he developed um, synthetic cortisone, which a lot of people have probably used and benefited from, and also another synthetic drug that's used to treat glaucoma and just made those a lot more affordable for more people to have and made it more um, made more people able to get those treatments. So, Well, and as I said at the top of the interview, we are here in the Creationarium. We are. <laughs> so what happens in this space? This is one of my favorite spaces, and this is, even from the early concept and the early stages of planning this exhibit, this is an area we knew we wanted to have. So this is just a space for our visitors, um, especially kids, but also adults, to create their own invention. And so what we're kind of asking people to do here is think of a problem that they have in their life and maybe something that they can think of that would solve it. Because that's, um, I mean, that's really what invention and innovation is, is, you know, you encounter a problem in your everyday life or at your job or at home and you think of a way to fix it and that's how we get invention. So that's what we're asking people to do here. And one of the big things we wanted to do with this exhibit was not only, of course, we're always looking to educate people about topics and people that maybe they haven't heard of, but we also wanted to kind of have this, um, we hope this, this, this exhibit would be kind of inspirational as well, especially to our younger um, visitors. We get a lot of third graders from the Cedar Rapids and surrounding school districts, and we wanted them to not only learn some things about these inventors, but also, you know, maybe be inspired that they could become an inventor, create something new someday. The title of the exhibit actually comes from a George Washington Carver quote. Um, it's, uh, since new developments are the products of a creative mind, we must therefore stimulate and encourage that type of mind in every way possible. And that really just kind of sums up what we're trying to do in this exhibit. So it's a great fit for the title. And the exhibit is on now. How long will it be here? It will be here for about a year. So we're looking right now to keep it open through the end of July of next year. So, so you don't have to exactly be in a rush right. to get here to see it, but don't dawdle either. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and I know that uh, you have you have an event coming up, not specifically associated with the mm -hmm. exhibit, but as long as we're here, yeah. let's talk about what you got coming so up. So on September 26th, um, we'll have our annual Journey to Freedom event. So something we do every year. It's an interactive underground railroad experience. So we actually ho hold this at Wikia Hill. Um, it'll be at 6 p.m. on September 26th. And what we have is it's essentially visitors who come participate in the program get the experience of escaping from slavery and kind of traveling on the Underground Railroad. So you start off the experience by escaping from slavery, and then the idea is to teach visitors skills that they would have needed to navigate the Underground Railroad. And the reason we do it at Wikiup is so people can have the experience of being immersed in the Iowa landscape and what it would have been, a little bit more what it would have been like at the time. Um, because the Underground Railroad did travel through Iowa, um, especially slaves coming up from Missouri. Usually they were actually going east towards the Mississippi River or Chicago. Um, and so we teach skills like navigating using the stars and how to build a fire um, and then just other general things about it. So it's, it's a really great and, and interesting experience and I think kind of impactful for people as well to have that. And if people want to get signed up for that, how do they do that? Um, so what they'll do to sign up for that, you can either call the museum, 319-862-2101, um, or email our educator, Crystal, and her email is kgladden, K-G-L-A-D-D-E-N, at blackiowa.org. Uh, well, thanks so much for, as I said, letting us letting the culture crawl take over the uh, exhibit for today. Uh, what are the museum hours? We are open want to come? Monday through Saturday from ten to four. And if people want more information, mm -hmm. they can go to your website, which is blackiowa.org. All right, Brianna Wright from the African American Museum of Iowa and from the African American <laughs> Museum of Iowa. Thanks again, Brianna. Thank you.